All right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, whatever time you find yourself watching this video, I pray that you are blessed, that you are having a great um, start to your day. Uh, my name is Ebony and I am the blogger behind Jesus in the Center, um, where I teach new Christians and not so new Christians um, about the um, 12 spiritual disciplines, um, especially the basic spiritual disciplines that we all need how to pray, how to fast, how to read and study your Bible. So if you're interested in learning about any of that stuff, you can um, go down to the description and find the link to my blog in the description and go check that out. Um, but on today, we are going to be covering Genesis chapters 6 through 10 as part of our Bible in the Year reading plan. Um, yesterday on day one, we covered Genesis chapters 1 through 5. And this is part of this stay focused plan that is from Bible study tools. What I like about this plan is that we will read five chapters for five days out of the week. And then on the, on days six and seven, days six and seven are our catch up days. And so we get to catch up on any reading. I know that I am a busy mom. And so sometimes I don't have time in my schedule um, to read the Bible. And so having those two catch up days allows me to catch up on the reading. So I'm really looking forward to reading through the Bible with you this year. We will cover Genesis to Revelation. So I'm looking forward to diving in with you. Um, as I said before, I'll be reading out of the NLT translation. So make sure you are following along in whatever translation um, you like best. But all right, let's jump into uh, Genesis chapter six. And it reads, Then the people began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any they wanted as their wives. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. In those days, and for some time after, Giant Nephilites lived on the earth, for whenever the sons of God had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children who became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart, and the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing, all the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them, but Noah found favor with the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on earth at the time and he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world, for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. Leave an 18-inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. Look! I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die, but I will confirm my covenant with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird and every kind of animal and every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive and be sure to take on board enough food for your family and for all the animals. So Noah did 
everything exactly as God had commanded him. And I find it interesting in this chapter that Noah was the only righteous person left on the earth. When we read chapter five, we talked about how these people lived for um, 900 plus years, which means a lot of these people were still alive when Noah um, was told to build the ark. And so the, but the word of God says that they were all wicked. Um, so I find that very interesting in this chapter that, you know, God declares that Noah is the only one that is righteous in this situation and all the rest of humanity has become corrupt and wicked. Chapter seven, when everything was ready, the Lord said to Noah, go into the boat with all your family for among all the people of the earth, I can see that you alone are righteous. Take with you seven pairs, male and female, of each animal I have approved for eating and for sacrifice, and take one pair of each of the others. Also take seven pairs of every kind of bird. There must be a male and a female in each pair to ensure that all life will survive on the earth after the flood. Seven days from now, I will make the rains pour down on the earth, and it will rain for 40 days and 40 nights until I have wiped from the earth all the living things I have created. So Noah did everything as the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood covered the earth. He went on board the boat to escape the flood. He and his wife and his sons and their wives. With them were all the various kinds of animals, those approved for eating and for sacrifice and those that were not, along with all the birds and the small animals that scurry along the ground. They entered the boat in pairs, male and female, just as God had commanded Noah. After seven days, the waters of the flood came and covered the earth. When Noah was 600 years old, on the 17th day of the second month, all the underground waters erupted from the earth, and the rain fell in mighty torrents from the sky. The rain continued to fall for 40 days and 40 nights. That very day, Noah had gone into the boat with his wife and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and their wives. With them in the boat were pairs of every kind of animal, domestic and wild, large and small, along with birds of every kind. Two by two, they came into the boat, representing every living thing that breathes. A male and a female of each kind entered just as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord closed the door behind them. For 40 days, the flood waters grew deeper, covering the ground and lifting the boat high above the earth. As the waters rose higher and higher above the ground, the boat floated safely on the surface. Finally, the water covered even the highest mountains on the earth, rising more than 22 feet above the highest peaks. All the living things on, the, on earth died, birds, domestic animals, wild animals, small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the people. Everything that breathed and lived on, on dry land died. God wiped out every living thing on the earth, people, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground, and the birds of the sky. All were destroyed. The only people who survived were Noah and those with him in the boat, and the flood waters covered the earth for 150 days. Amen. Um, the interesting thing about this chapter is I believe in the previous chapter, it said that Noah was um, 500 years old when he had his sons. And then he was 600 years old when they entered into the ark. So it took Noah quite a bit of time to um, to build the ark. It, it took him, you know, a few years, which I can imagine since they only had basic tools back then that Noah was 600 years old when the flood started. So that's pretty, um, pretty amazing. Um, I can imagine how long it would take us to build something like that nowadays. Genesis chapter eight, but God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in the boat. He sent a wind to blow across the earth and the flood waters began to recede. The underground waters stopped flowing and the torrential rains from the sky were stopped. So the flood waters gradually receded from the earth. After 150 days, exactly five months from the time the flood began, the boat came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Two and a half months later, as the waters continued to go down, 
other mountain peaks became visible. After another 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the boat and released the raven. The bird flew back and forth until the flood waters on the earth had dried up. He also released a dove to see if the water had receded and it could find dry ground. But the dove could find no place to land because the water still covered the ground. So it returned to the boat and Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back inside. After waiting another seven days, Noah released the dove again. This time the dove returned to him in the evening with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Then Noah knew that the flood waters were almost gone. He waited another seven days and then released the dove again. This time it did not come back. No, Noah was now 601 years old on the first day of the new year. Ten and a half months after the flood began, the floodwaters had almost dried up from the earth. Noah lifted back the covering of the boat and saw that the surface of the ground was drying. Two more months went by and at Last, the earth was dry. Then God said to Noah, leave the boat, all of you, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Release all the animals, the birds, the livestock, and the small animals that scurry along the ground so they can be fruitful and multiply throughout the earth. So Noah, his wife, and his sons and their wives left the boat and all of the large and small animals and birds came out of the boat pair by pair. Then Noah built an altar for the Lord, and there he sacrificed as burnt offerings the animals and birds that had been approved for that purpose. And the Lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself, I will never again curse the ground because of the human race, even though everything they think or imagine is bent towards evil from childhood. I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. That is chapter eight. Um, yeah, the I can't imagine being in a boat for that long, um, sitting in there with animals for that amount of time. So um, Noah did a great job because I don't think I could have sat in a boat for a year and then almost another year until the water was completely dry and they were able to get out. We would have had cabin fever. I think of, you know, how people reacted during COVID and having to be stuck in their houses. So I can only imagine how Noah and them felt having to be stuck on that boat. Chapter nine, God confirms his covenant. Then God blessed Noah and his sons and told them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, all the animals of the earth, all the birds of the sky, all the small animals that scurry along the ground, and all the fish in the sea will look on you with fear and terror. I have placed them in your power. I have given them to you for food, just as I have given you grain and vegetables. But you must never eat any meat that still has the lifeblood in it. And I will require the blood of anyone who takes another person's life. If a wild animal kills a person, it must die, and anyone who murders a fellow human must die. If anyone takes a human life, that person's life will also be taken by human hands, for God made human beings in his own image. Now be fruitful and multiply and repopulate the earth. And then God told Noah and his sons, I hereby confirm my covenant with you and your descendants and with all the animals that were on the boat with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, every living creature on earth. Yes, I am confirming my covenant with you. Never again will floodwaters kill all living creatures. Never again will a flood destroy the earth. Then God said, I am giving you a sign of my covenant with you and with all living creatures for all generations to come. I have placed my rainbow in the clouds. It is a sign of my covenant with you and with all the earth. When I send clouds over the earth, the rainbow will, will appear in the clouds and I will remember my covenant with you and with all living creatures. Never again will the flood waters destroy all life. When I see the rainbow in the clouds, I will remember the eternal covenant between God and every living creature on earth. Then God said to Noah, yes, this rainbow is the sign of the covenant I am confirming with all the creatures on the earth. The sons of Noah who came out of the boat with their father were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham is the father of Canaan. 
From these three sons of Noah came all the people who now populate the earth. After the flood, Noah began to cultivate the ground, and he planted a vineyard. One day he drank some wine he had made, and he became drunk and lay naked inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw that his father was naked and went outside and told his brothers. Then Shem and Japheth took a robe, held it over their shoulders, and backed into the tent to cover their father. As they did this, they looked the other way so they did not see him naked. When Noah woke up from his stupor, he learned what Ham, his youngest son, had done. Then he cursed Canaan, the son of Ham. May Canaan be cursed. May he be the lowest of servants to his relatives. Then Noah said, May the Lord, the God of Shem, be blessed, and may Canaan be his servant. May God expand the territory of Japheth. May Japheth share the prosperity of Shem, and may Canaan be his servant. Noah lived another 350 years after the great flood. He lived 950 years, and then he died. And so that is the end of chapter 9, and we hear about Noah and his sons and um, how Canaan was cursed because he, instead of going and covering his father's nakedness, um, because nakedness represents shame in the Bible, um, he went and told other people about it <laughs> instead of just doing the right thing and covering up his father's nakedness and spreading it around in, in the camp. Chapter 10. This is the account of the families of Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the three sons of Noah. Many children were born to them after the great flood. Descendants of Japheth. The descendants of Japheth were Gomer, Magog, Madi, Javan, Tubal, Meshes, and Tiras. The descendants of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Rip, Riphath, and Togomar. The descendants of Javan were Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Rodinim. Their descendants became the seafaring peoples that spread out to various lands, each identified by its own language, clan, and nationality. The descendants of Ham were Cush, Mizram, Put, and Canaan. The descendants of Cush were Seba, Havilah, Sabta, Rama, and Saptica. The descendants of Rama were Sheba and Dedan. Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Since he was the greatest hunter in the world, his name became proverbial. People would say, this man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia with the cities of Babylon, er Eric, Akkad, and Kalna. From there, he expanded his territory to Assyria, building the cities of Nineveh, Rehoboth Ur, Kala, and Rezin the great city located between Nineveh and Kala. Mizraim was the ancestor of the Ludites, Anamites, Lehabites, Naphtuhites, Pathrushites, Kashluthites, and the Kaptorites, from whom the Philistines came. Canaan's oldest son was Sidon, the ancestor of the Sidonians. Canaan was also the ancestor of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zemorites, and Hamathites. The Canaanite clans eventually spread out, and the territory of Canaan extended from Sidon and to the north to Gerar and Gaza in the south, and east as far as Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboam near Lasha. These were the descendants of Ham, identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. Sons were also born to Shem, the older brother of Japheth. Shem was the ancestor of all the descendants of Eber. The descendants of Shem were Elam, Ashur, Aphrodax, Lud, and Aram. The descendants of Aram were Uz, Hol, Gether, and Mash. Arphadax was the father of Shelah, and Shelah was the father of Eber. Eber had two sons. The first was named Peleg, which means division, for during his lifetime, the people of the world were divided into different language groups. His brother's name was Joktan. Joktan was the ancestor of Almodad, Seleph, Hazarameth, Jera, Hadaram, Uzal, Dikla, Obal, Abimel, Sheba, Ophir, Havilah, and Jobab. All these were the descendants of Joktan. 
The territory they occupied extended from Misha all the way to Safar in the eastern mountains. These were the descendants of Shem, identified by clan, language, territory, and national identity. These are the clans that descended from Noah's sons, arranged by nation according to their lines of descent. All the nations of earth descended from these clans after the great flood. Amen. And that is the end of chapter 10. We have completed our day two of our Bible reading plan where we have covered the flood, Noah and his family, and the, the nations that came from Noah and his family, um, and the covenant that God made with not just with human beings, but with all the animals of the earth, the promise not to flood the earth again, which is such a blessing and a promise for God to not de not destroy us that way again. Um, so praise the Lord for that. Um, I will see you on tomorrow for day three of our Bible in a Year reading plan. I pray that you are blessed. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that you can get the notifications when the next day is uploaded. But all right, guys, have a blessed day. Bye.